Hello, it is Tip Tuesday, and I am professional organizer Lorraine Brock and owner of Get Organized. And every Tuesday here on our Facebook Live page, um, I give you uh, tips on all things organized. Uh, this is our eighth episode, and each week uh, we pick a different topic to discuss and to give you tips on. And so I'm very excited about today because I don't think that there's any adult that uh, currently has a smartphone that cannot benefit from today's topic. Uh, and that is about all about organizing your digital photos. Primarily, we're going to be talking about the photos on your phone but we can absolutely bring in maybe other photos that are on your hard drives or thumb drives or scattered abroad across other um, digital devices. So um, very exciting about today because I'm actually in the midst of organizing my digital photos. Uh, most of my photos that were actually paper photos have been scanned, not all of them, but most of them. And I'm taking those photos and incorporating them into my digital file structure. We're gonna talk about that. So this is a process. If you start undergoing a organizational project of your digital photos, just know that the same structure that we're gonna talk about today can absolutely apply with your paper, your physical photos that you can eventually scan and get them into this system. Uh, there's not one perfect system. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about pros and cons with a little bit of both, a little bit of how, how I actually organize mine and, and why. I think it's good to know the why behind how you set up your file structure with organizing photos. Now, when I talk about photos, I don't want to leave out videos because Many of us take just as many videos as we do photos, and videos are larger files, so they do take up more storage space. So we're gonna incorporate, when I say photos, we're gonna also incorporate videos in that, it's gonna be interchangeable there, that you can do one or the other with as well. So organizing your digital photos. I wanna sort of tell you a little bit about why this is really important because I have three, or me and my husband have three sons, and there is no way that they are going to be able to share our memories and the photos of their childhood if I only have one copy of them. So they're in, who knows if they can find the photos that they're looking for or a particular age that they were. And so we have um, come up probably in the last, I would say, 10 years, I've been working on a really good file structure. And every year I keep doing this. That means the current year is always completed at the end of the year. But now I'm also bringing in past years. The first year I became a mom, the year I got married, all the photos that I had in physical spaces, I'm bringing those into my system. So eventually they'll be all in one place and these files can be shared amongst my, my children or anyone that might need a copy or desire a copy. So that was sort of the intent is knowing that there was no way that my kids could share and look at all these photos. And I really, the second thing is I didn't want them uh, to have to later on as I, as I and my husband get older to really have that burden of organizing the photos. And I know that my father, he's, I think he's seven, uh, 83 or 84, and he has a lot of physical photos that I'm probably going to inherit and I'm going to have to make those into digital copies and, and get them scanned for uh, my siblings. But I didn't want my children to be burdened with that and I wanted them to be able to quickly look at a memory anytime that they wanted. So that's sort of what spawned uh, me organizing uh, into file structures and a system where I could continue that on into the future. Another thing is, I don't know about you, but if you check your phone, most people uh, are really running out of storage space on their cell phones. They take a lot of photos and a lot of videos and often they're having to get rid of apps or to delete bad photos. And of course, 
absolutely want to delete bad photos because they are unnecessary to keep. I do find that a lot of people are bordering or hovering right there on the fact that they need more storage on their phones. Now, phones, as you buy newer and newer phones, come uh, with more and more storage, but keeping them on your phone is really not the best option. And I'm going to give you a, a true story. So I guess it was about five, maybe six years ago, my father-in-law, who uh, received a smartphone from my husband and started using it, he was actually uh, bending over. He had his cell phone in his shirt pocket up here. And he was actually, he lives out in the country and had a septic tank. And he was having to open up the septic tank and to get um, a look inside of whatever was going on. And what happened when he bent over, the phone that was in his pocket, as you probably can imagine, went right into the septic tank. Well, he was in a panic. Absolutely, totally in a panic because his baby grandchildren's pictures were on there from their birth. And and to him, these were like, in his mind, they were completely gone. And truthful, truth be told, in many cases, if people are not uh, setting up a proper backup system for their photos, you're right, these photos could absolutely be gone in an instant. Because there's no way, number one, he's going to go in and get that phone and number two, even if he was able to be in a situation where he could retrieve that phone, who knows if the phone would even be working. So he obviously lost the phone. Well, later he ended up talking to my husband and found out that my husband had set him up on a, a cloud technology that would actually back up his photos. And of course, we looked like angels to him because we were able to come in and save the day and be able to retrieve those photos and it, you know, he didn't know that they were even existing on a backup and that was totally fine. We were handling it. But the importance of that story is that you want to be able to have your photos, even if your phone gets damaged or lost in any of those cases, if you're just saving your phone, uh, the images, the photos and videos, just saving them directly to your phone and they're not going anywhere else, you always have that risk. So we want to minimize the risk and sort of give you some ideas and tips today on how to organize your digital photos. Now, know that this segment could be broken down into many different parts, so I'm not going to expand on everything, but I am going to get you started on some great organizing tips for taking that those digital photos and getting them organized. So, all right, let's talk about what the cloud is. And I'm not getting into the tips yet. I just want to make sure you guys know what the cloud is. For most people, they understand it. But for anybody that is watching this, especially on the replay, you'll realize that uh, maybe you or maybe maybe your parents don't understand what the cloud is. And it's important that you be able to explain them. So the cloud is basically a, it's not something that's stored up in the sky, but the cloud is basically uh, companies that have large warehouses of servers uh, randomly throughout the world and our information when we save it is saved there if we save on the cloud. Now we use many people used to save and still do save on their computer their their actual physical box in their home where their computer is on that hard drive they would save pictures, videos, files all on that. And that is absolutely doable still today. But the other way that you can save things is on the cloud. And so the, the benefit of the cloud is uh, there is accessibility no matter where you're at in the world. I could be at the library. I can be at somebody else's computer uh, somewhere across the nation of the world and be able to, with a login credentials, be able to get access to every bit of my information that's stored on the cloud. So you don't have to be in your home. It's not store, stored on your hard drive. It's stored on a cloud, uh, somebody else's computer, um, servers, that we, you can actually access. So the benefit of that is that, let's say you're not only accessibility, being able to get to something and you're not at home or in front of your computer, but the other benefit to it is what if your hard drive failed? What if there, what your house burned and you lost that computer, that hard drive? Well, you'd be able to access information 
uh, if it was on the cloud, but if it was stored on your stored on your hard drive, you would have lost that information. Obviously, probably costing time and money and much frustration that would um, maybe not even be able to recover some of those documents and images. So the cloud is is just merely a big warehouses of powerful large amounts of servers uh, that store large amounts of information. The negative to the cloud, and my husband who's in the IT world will absolutely tell you this, is that you do have a little bit more risk in people hacking you um, versus having something stored at your home. But there's pros and cons with both. So there's risk to everything. So I personally don't like to store a lot of financial information on the cloud just because of that. I prefer to store that in other ways. But for photos and videos, I think it's a great option and we're gonna be talking about that today. So hopefully you understand the difference um, in the hard drive saving on it versus the cloud and be able to be able to understand what the cloud actually is. So let's get started with our tips. Tip number one is to define where you want to store your photos at. Now, there are three main companies and there are quite a few other companies, but three main companies come to mind when we're talking about cloud storage. That is Google Drive, OneDrive, and Amazon. Both of those are powerhouse companies, um, are backed by powerhouse companies that store and do this very, very well. And so you've got to decide where you want to store your information at. If you don't know where you want to store it, then you're sort of in limbo because you can't really begin saving any kind of digital information. Now, understand that when you have a cloud technology, you can use it to store other things on, not just photos and videos, but we're going to specifically be talking about those today. So you need to look at what you get. So we know about the companies that we're going to be talking about today, and so you need to look at what you're going to get. Different cloud technologies offer different incentives. Uh, they give different... Um, benefits and and information and storage and different things that you can get with your packages. So you can't just say, well, I'm going to go to one company. You really need to look at all three companies or even the smaller companies and look at what you're getting for what you're paying. Not any of the companies that are out there that I mentioned just offer cloud technology storage and that alone Normally, they all offer other things that go along with it. And some of those things vary depending on what the company is. For example, here, uh, and we'll get into this a little bit more in, in, in detail uh, at the end, but Google offers two terabytes of cloud storage. Now, that's a lot of cloud storage. Now, they obviously, these companies offer less. But they offer two terabytes of cloud storage for about $100 a year. Now, you can pay monthly for this as well. And it's for up to five family members that can use it. So you say, well, I don't want to share my access to my photos and videos with other family members. When I say that, I mean that each individual family member, up to five, gets to have their own account within your account. It's almost like um, I have my own password and username for my my two terabytes of storage, and then my husband can have his. He can't see mine, and I can't see his, but it's all under one account. So that's a great benefit. Um, this is shared, the two terabytes of storage is shared not only with your photos and videos, but also with your email storage. So that's just not storage for your email. You also get a certain amount of storage, and that combines that two terabytes combines with your email storage, how much you save on that, uh, your files that are attached to documents or anything like that. The other one is Amazon. And of course, a lot of people uh, have the Prime membership. So this is where Amazon becomes really uh, a good value when you're using that Prime membership in addition to. So Amazon, you get a good deal when you get $60 a year for one terabyte of cloud storage. Now, to get that deal, you have to be a Prime member, which there are a lot of people that are. The great thing about this one is photos don't count 
for storage. So when we're talking about organization of photos and videos, so why doesn't it count? That's just one of the things you get with them is their your photo storage does not count towards that one terabyte of cloud storage. Videos, documents, other things like that would, and that gives you a little bit more wiggle room. You know, understand that one terabyte or two terabytes is a large, large quantity of storage. I have used one terabyte for many years, like at least 10 or 15 years of uh, photo storage, and so far I'm doing wonderful, and I only have one terabyte. So it'll take a long time to use that storage up, but eventually you might have to purchase additional storage, and we'll talk about that. So the third, uh, third option that I'm going to talk about today under tip number one is also OneDrive. And OneDrive is the company, uh, Microsoft Cloud Storage, that I personally use. It comes with one terabyte of cloud storage. And the difference between what you get with the other ones and what you get with uh, OneDrive is that uh, it also comes with Microsoft Office Suite. So if you buy... Office 365, which is basically online, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, Outlook. It comes with one terabyte of cloud storage. So you say, Lorraine, I already have um, Office 365 and I'm not using OneDrive. Well, you're missing out on part of the free services or the services that I say free, but that you're paying for. You can also sell or share that with other members of your family. So up to five people again. So each member of your family or extended family or whoever you want to share your, your account with can get their own individual account under what you're paying a year and nobody pays anything extra and nobody sees what your information is. So their service also costs $100 a year, but you also get Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook in addition to the cloud storage. Many of you may already have Office 365 and don't even realize that you get this cloud storage is included in your annual subscription. So don't run out there and buy something uh, after today if you already have Office 365. So just keep in mind that you have to look at what you need. If you don't use Word or Excel or Outlook, which is an email app, then you can absolutely say, well, I don't know if this is the best deal for me. You might want to go with Google. So you look at all the options that are available and see what comes with them. Now, at all the three that I talked about, each three has a lot more options they come with included in the price. So check that out. And we'll review this at the end. So tip number two is your file structure. So once you've decided what you want to use, where you want to store your photos, now you've got to decide on what kind of file structure you want. I want to sort of talk about my file structure since I think it's really an awesome system. So I organize my digital photos by year. So I create categories. So 2019 is coming up and I'm going to be creating a 2019 folder inside of my OneDrive. So let me take you back just a little bit. So inside my OneDrive uh, is a folder that's labeled family uh, or uh, videos and photos, something like that, or photos and videos. You can name it whatever you want, but that's where all of my photos that I take for all personal and any kind of videos is actually stored. Inside that folder is another folder, what we would know as a subfolder. And in fact, there's many folders inside of that folder. I have one for each year. So my photo organization currently goes back to 1970. Well, I don't have a lot that is where I started because that was the year that I was born. So I even have some of my baby pictures from the 1970 that I have scanned and put in there. So let's move forward a little bit to 2018. So I have photos in there in my 2018 folder from different events. So I organize my files by events. So I don't just throw all the pictures that I took in 2018 into that folder. I break it down into additional subfolders. Like, for example, we may have Christmas. 
Well, the Christmas folder is there, but they also have other folders inside the Christmas folder, like my Christmas with my family, or uh, the Christmas with my husband's family, or maybe it's our immediate family that we have. So you have to look at the events that go on in your life. And you can get in deeper and go down further if you want, but I organize them by events. So let's say there's a birthday folder, and then I have everyone's birthday pictures organized within that folder. So it allows me to be able to go back. All I have to remember is a little bit of the time frame, that what, not necessarily what year, but maybe I can get close to it and poke around. And once I find the year that something's in, then I know exactly based on how I've labeled it to which folder to go to. Our youngest son deployed this year, and we have a folder called pre-deployment photos. Just of him and us just taking different ceremonies and things that we did before he left for the military. So we have a pre-deployment fo folder. Then we have another folder that's a deployment folder where maybe uh, we do screenshots when we're talking to him on our phone. And like today he called and there was Christmas lights in the background. I'm like, let me get a picture. And I screenshotted that. So we are having different occasions it may not be a one-day occasion. It may be a time frame, like what time he's deployed. So it's really good to make sure you identify your photos. Don't throw all your fold, uh, photos or videos into one year because you're going to have to scroll hundreds, possibly even thousands of files until you find the ones that you want. So organize them by year and then organize by them by event. So that is your tip number two. So tip number three, let's say that you inherited a lot of physical photos and you want to take them digital. So what's the easiest, less cost way to do that? I would recommend that you send your physical photos off to a company called scandigital.com. They offer many times during the first of the year, they will offer a highly discounted Groupon deals for you to be able to purchase and send your photos off to them. You're like, I'm sending my precious photos in the mail. Yes, you are. But they have an outstanding tracking system and they notify you at every corner where your photos are in the processing that they received and that they're sending them off and they will scan them for you and put them on a hard drive uh, where you can upload to the cloud when you get that back. Uh, you can do, uh, they can put, put them on DVDs. There's different options based on the price you want to pay and where you want the photos to ultimately go. Do you want them to live on that DVD when you get them back? Or do you want to be able to have the ability to upload them to the cloud when they get them all scanned? Now, when those photos come back, you're going to be tempted to want to keep those physical photos. Once you verify that those photos are scanned and you can tell they all, they're all they not all blurry or they didn't all turn out black photos or white background of the photos, that you actually can see them, then throw away the physical photos and take those photos that are now digital and you've maximized your space as well as being able to now organize them. I would highly recommend making sure that you organize physical photos before you send them off because they're going to scan them in the order that they receive them. It sort of sounds like a call waiting center, didn't it? <laughs> so make sure that if you want to organize all the Christmas photos from a particular uh, year together, make sure you do that before you mail it off. So that website is scandigital.com. And make sure you go to Groupon. You can purchase multiple Groupon deals. I think I've purchased up to three and be able to send off. Now, some of these are also, these Groupon deals are like VHS uh, going over to DVD or saving, saving them as a digital file to upload. So they offer many different oh, things that you can um, get over your videos or 8mm. But specifically today, for talking about photos, uh, they can absolutely help with that. So that was tip number three. So going back just to review a little bit, I want to just talk about the three main ones that you can look at. Google offers two terabytes of cloud storage for about $100 a year for up to five family members. 
Amazon, if you have a Prime membership, they offer for $60 a year, one terabyte of cloud storage. Photos do not count in that storage, uh, but you can store them there. It just doesn't count towards your one terabyte. And lastly, my favorite is OneDrive, and that is Microsoft's cloud storage. They offer one terabyte of cloud storage. Up to five uh, people in your family can share that account. Each of them get one terabyte each. And you also comes with all the Microsoft Office suite that many of us already have or definitely use. So you have to look at, again, what you have. All the internets, uh, all the internets, there's one internet. Um, if you go on the internet, you'll be able to look at each of these based on their website and be able to find exactly what's included in their package and pick the very best one for you to store your photos and videos on. All right, so I want to mention, hey, Connie, I see you're live with us. Uh, I wanted to mention that Connie from um, Moore, Oklahoma, won our last week's giveaway with all of our Get Organized swag. So we're sending you, Connie, a Get Organized hat, a shirt, a really cool apron that's really good if you're you know, hanging pictures or working around the house needing to, you know, even gift wrapping. That would be an awesome thing, keeping scissors and tapes in it, uh, as well as some other goodies from Get Organized. So that'll be on in the mail soon to you. And congratulations and thanks for leaving a comment last week. We'd love to see a picture in all your swag uh, posted on the Get Organized Facebook page uh, when you get it. So hook us up with a cool picture with all your swag. Um, all right, so let's talk about our giveaway today. So anyone watching our live feed on uh, Tip Tuesday today, if you leave a comment down below of which tip you liked the most out of our three tips that we talked about on organizing your digital photo, let us know which one you like the most and you will be entered into our drawing for this week. So we're giving away furniture sliders. Now, I want to tell you, I love these things. I have like two sets, maybe even three sets. I love them. So when I started organizing, uh, I was by myself and I did not have the ability to move a lot of things. And I found these things. And a lot of people's heard of them, but you may not have them. So one thing to look for if you purchase these is you want to make sure you get these fabric covers that go over these. I think these are um, like five inch ones, five inch ones. I don't like the small ones too much. The five inch ones go great for small or large, so they're more versatile. But you wanna make sure you get the ones that have a cover. And the reason why is because if you go over any kind of like wooden floor, uh, these can scratch. So you wanna put these little covers over the actual disc. And that saves your wooden floors from being scratched. And if you don't need them, you're doing something on carpet, then you just use these by themselves. So we're gonna send out uh, we're going to take entries all the way till next Sunday uh, at midnight. And on Sunday by midnight, we'll look at who made comments down below, uh, telling us which tip was their favorite out of the three. And then we'll pick one and mention it uh, to you next week on Tip Tuesday. And we'll give you one of these and get them out to you. So love these furniture sliders. Uh, and you can get these at like uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, a lot of places have them, but they are a must-have around the house. You can move anything almost. I've moved large beds with them. So, all right, so let's talk about um, what's in our Tip Tuesday tool today and our toolbox here. I really like what we have in here today. In fact, I've used this for many years. I'm currently not using one but I have used it for many years. And what I like about it is its versatility. You know, if, if a product can be versatile and maximize space, I love it. Oh, I think I'm gonna do a Tip Tuesday on just multi-purpose items. I love being able to have like, hey, this works for this and it works for that. So let's look inside our box and see what we have today. Okay. So I kept the picture on here um, so you can see. This is actually a brand new one. But this is called a cascading letter file tote. So what I like about it is that it's portable. One of the main things about it, it's portable. And this comes in many different colors. So make sure if you're looking for these 
These at Container Store have different colors they come in. If you buy one of these on Amazon, I don't think they come in different colors, but they do have a style of these cascading letter file tote on Amazon as well because I actually did look them up and make sure they did have them so they do. So if you don't have a container store in your area, you can get them online at Amazon. So, or order them from container store. Okay, so I wanna show you, it's stapled right here, at, or not stapled, but attached, snap shut. And what it is, when you open this up, the cascading folders come down. And that means you can actually take your bills, you can take paperwork or mail, uh, if you have a business that you've got to have paperwork with you on an airplane, in a car ride, Thanksgiving's coming up. You might need to take a little bit of stuff with you on the road to make sure you don't get behind. I don't like ever coming home and having a pile of things to do. But if I can take some things with me and get them done while I'm just killing some time, that's a big thing for me. I love, makes me feel good. So there, these are all here where you can actually put folders in. Now, you can just stuff mail inside here if you want, but you can also put in like manila or cute type folders in here and you can take the folder out and that will give it a little bit of a different look as well if you have some uh, cute stylish uh, manila type folders, but you don't have to. And then here's a little hole at the top here. So if you prefer when you're not traveling or going remote to hang this on a wall or a hook, you can actually do that. And then down here is some little pockets that you can put things in as well. So it's versatile, versatile and portable, and that's what I like. So when you don't need it and you wanna take it with you, you just fold it back up and clip it back down here. Real sturdy uh, snaps too. And then here you have a handle where you can actually take it with you wherever you go. And it's really thin. Now, of course, it's gonna get a little thicker if you have a lot of papers in here, but this is something that can go in your luggage. It can go possibly, you know, like a, it could go in my purse. I don't know if I told you or not, but my husband says I travel wherever I go. And that, that is, that is true. I travel everywhere I go. So I'm prepared. Remember the best defense against chaos is preparation. And I'm prepared, that's what he says. So anyway, love this tool today that we're talking about. And so again, it's this is the white and gray uh, cascading letter file tote from Container Store. Again, it comes in many colors and you can also find a version of this at Amazon. And I didn't actually look at like Staples or Office Max but I bet they have one too, but they have one that just probably um, was close to that one, probably different colors though. So, all right, let's talk about um, the next thing we're gonna talk about. So one of the things that we do here at Get Organized uh, in a very limited basis and in very limited areas is IT organizational services. This is something new that we've been experimenting with this year in 2018, and it will continue on in 2019. Uh, we offer photo organization, file structure, email organization, uh, but in very limited areas. Right now, we currently offer it in the Dallas area, and we offer it in the Keller area, which is more towards the Fort Worth side. And we have organizers that can work on both Mac and PCs, and they can go in. And the biggest request, to be honest, is photo organization and gathering all those photos from old computers that are no longer being used or uh, from thumb drives or DVDs in a drawer that just you got them from the photo place and you never used them, uh, never put them anywhere. And so just getting a file structure and getting that all together for our clients. We've also been known to take those digital photos and create scrapbooks for gifts for clients as well. But if you have a larger need, like a small business need, uh, we can go up a level. One of our people can actually come out, set you up on uh, Office 365 for small businesses. Uh, whether you have an on-site server and you want to go to the cloud, they can actually do that as well. And that's limited to the Dallas-Fort Worth area and surrounding areas around that. So if you have a need and you live in one of those areas or close by, give us uh, our office a call and we will be able to tell you if we service your area 
and be able to help you on your IT organization. So this is both for residential and small businesses. So, all right, um, next week on Tip Tuesday, y'all are going to get a look at my vehicle. So we're going to be talking about car organization next week. And I'm going to take you guys around. It's not going to be like a stationary episode. I'm going to have you guys on the selfie stick. And we're going to take a look at different things in my vehicle for organization. So, I mean, I know we're traveling this week. And so, uh, but we're also going to be traveling for Christmas too coming up. So make sure you tune into that. I am going to try to clean up my car. It's not real messy, but I want to try to do it. But I'm also going to be real with you, not perfect. So just, just remember that. So next week uh, on car organization, we're going to get a look at my vehicle. Um, and I think that's all for today. I think we're done giving the three tips and talking. Connie, wonderful to see you online. And uh, also, everyone listening, don't forget, leave a comment down below of your favorite tip of our digital organizing your photos talk today on tip tuesday let us know your favorite tip and you will be entered in for a drawing for our furniture sliders that we will mail out to you uh, make sure you leave the comment down below by next sunday night uh, by midnight and we will be able to send these out to you hopefully we draw your name so guys it's wonderful on tip tuesday to, to see you guys and i hope you guys have a blessed Thanksgiving, I encourage you to uh, print out uh, or talk about uh, what the actual first Thanksgiving was uh, and really know the history. It's not just about the pilgrims. It's so much more about how they got here and why they came. And in fact, I think we're going to list that on our Facebook page. So if you want to um, take that and open it up on Thanksgiving around the table and read the true history of um, the pilgrims and how they got here. Uh, it was really fascinating. So much more I learned from that story than what's in our textbooks at school. So you guys have a blessed Thanksgiving as we give uh, thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ for all the things that he has given us and blessed our nation and my family personally with this year and beyond. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Happy Tip Tuesday.